I'm going through the album and MVP comes on and I'm there. The lyric I was talking about, you say, up at the studio. I know it's just, yep. Mm -hmm. Drake is just the room away. Maybe I should barge in. Maybe I should wait. It's going to be a funny story a couple months from today when I tell it and it's like. There was a picture that Future put up on uh, his Instagram and it was like him and Drake in the studio. And now me and Boogus, like, we recognize the picture because it was at a studio 10 minutes from where the spot was at. Tree Sound? Tree Sound. Shout, shout out to Molly, shout out to Groove Chambers. I, so I called Tree Sound, I'm like, yo, you gotta get me a session tonight. Cause like, on the off chance I run into Drake and Future or some shit. So like, he got me a room. And so we pull up and it's mad like militant, like you can tell that those motherfuckers are in there. And so we're literally just sitting there for two hours, just trying to figure out, should we like, how are we gonna make this happen? Should we like, fake walk in there, like, Boogie's is Nigerian, so I was like, bro, maybe you should just, like, walk in there and act like you're not from America, just be speaking some different language and be like, yo, my fault. But I was like, I don't know, maybe we'll catch him, like, on the way to the bathroom or some shit. I don't know, we literally sat there for two and a half hours drinking and smoking, trying to figure out what the fuck we should do. We ended up doing nothing and we just left, but, you know, it's back to that whole just... Trying to just get on. See, this is why I tell y'all niggas, like, y'all can't be going out here hoping and wishing and praying and worrying about some Illuminati secrets and all that dumb shit. This is why I say this, right? Because it puts you in these positions like this where you look like a clown. Everything Russ said right here, he looked like a clown. But we've all been there. I've been in them situations where I try to finagle my way into some shit, hoping somebody might say something or reach out to me or, man, you got some bars, you got some ideas. That shit don't work. That shit don't work. So I'm going to tell you like what he did where he fucked up and what he could have did that would have actually worked and put him in a better position like he is today. We really going to break this down. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pod. My name is Dorian from Group82Music.com, and right here we got Russ talking about how he almost barged in on Drake and Future's recording session. So this is 2015. This is what a time to be alive. They were recording that album. And when you are on the outside looking in, you look at these big-time stars, a Drake, a Future, a Cole, a Kendrick, a Jay-Z, a Kanye, a Travis Scott, little baby. You look at these dudes as like, man, if I just get next to them, something might happen because there's people around them that's going to put me on. That's like saying, man, the way I'm be able to pay my bills this month is if I get a scratch off and I hit that motherfucker for a thousand dollars. Like you can't live your life like that. So you can't have your music career look like that neither. But when you're on the come up, this is the shit you be thinking about. And Russ is just like the rest of us. He was on the come up. So he went, wasted his money on booking a session, had his homeboy in there with him, who's also an artist. Shout out to Bugus. And I think it's Bugus, Bugus, Bugus. I think it's Bugus. I don't want to mispronounce. I don't know, brother. You know what I'm talking about. Shout out to him. They got liquor, they had weed, and they rented a studio session just to get high to come up with a hypothetical plan on how to go two doors down into Drake and Future session. That's some cornball shit. That's paralysis by analysis. This is why I tell y'all quit worrying about trying to get on with people. Quit trying to impress people. Stop worrying about all that bullshit and put out the content and find your own motherfucking fans. Let's say that you do walk in a Drake and Future session and they look at you and two niggas randomly come in they don't know. What positive reaction are they going to have to you? None. Nigga, they don't know you. Get the fuck out. What do you think they're going to do? Hey, man, shit. Y'all are like, you dope. Oh, shit. You want to come in and hop on our album? It doesn't work like that. You got to build up proof. See, look at my career. Look at the things that I'm doing, right? This is the kind of the reservations I have with the podcast. I like doing the podcast, but I don't like asking motherfuckers to come on the podcast. I ask you one time, and that's it. Because I feel like after a while, you begging because I don't need y'all to put me on. The podcast going to go regardless. I'm going to grow regardless. I'm going to make money regardless. And when I started having that mentality, that's when people wanted to come on my podcast. When I started thinking like that and moving like that, that's when people started buying and streaming my music. When I started saying this shit's going to move regardless anyway, that's when I got a blue check on Instagram. Shit I don't even care about like that. But I know a lot of y'all do, so I talk about it. You got to put yourself in a position, man, where no matter what, if you get the big cosign or not, you're going to be massive regardless. And that's what Russ did. Russ started putting out content consistently. Started putting out songs consistently. He signed to a record label. He kept working, kept doing interviews, kept taking on the haters nonstop, face front. I don't even know what the fuck face front mean. Face forward, confrontation. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. He did that. 
And now he's putting himself in a position where he's an independent artist who has millions of fans, can sell out arenas. Has he linked with Drake? No. Has he linked with Future? No, he hasn't. But it don't matter. He's still successful in his own right. J. Cole's career with Jay-Z was the same way. He couldn't wait on Jay-Z. Cole had to go. Big Sean with Kanye. He couldn't wait on Kanye. He had to go. And these are people they were signed to. All y'all want a motherfucking handout. Ain't nobody gonna hand you shit. If they have fame, they have clout, they have fans, they not about to share it with your ass. Those are their fans, not yours. Go get your own goddamn fans. And that's what we talk about everything here at Group 82. How to get your own goddamn fans. I'm working on a class right now. Music marketing, music management class. And a lot of this shit I talk about. I almost slipped up and said something I said inside the class. But there are things that we dive deeper into, into the class. If you're interested in this class, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on YouTube. Get on our email list. Because we're going to tell you once it's available for enrollment, some music marketing, music management class, I'm telling you, it's everything I've learned in the past six years, and I've truncated into a six-week program. Shit's going to change your life. So, if you into it, click the link up top on Instagram, download our free ebook, get on our email list. You on YouTube, click the link in the box, download our free ebook, get on our email list, so that way you stay abreast on the class. I'm out the pod. Y'all stay true. About that. Group eighty two music dot com dot com dot com dot com